Hi, my name is Tyler, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a website step-by-step -step with no steps skipped. This new way to make a website is so easy. It's just 27 simple steps. Some of the steps are 30 seconds long and some are eight minutes long, but they're all really easy and it's all step-by-step. -step. So the steps are the intro, which we're doing right now, getting your domain name and host, which is getting your website name like yourwebsite.com. Then after that, we're gonna set up your website. We're gonna install WordPress, which is the most popular way to make a website in the entire world. WordPress has a 59.5% market share. Other companies like Squarespace, Shopify, and Wix aren't even close. It's used by companies and people like CNN, Forbes, UPS, eBay, Jay-Z, and Katy Perry. And that's because WordPress, unlike these other companies, is open sourced. And what that means is that anyone can build anything for WordPress and release it to the public. So if you need something specific like a contact form or a certain design, chances are you don't need to pay for it. The WordPress community probably has already built it for you absolutely free. And that's why WordPress is the best. Then after that, we're gonna do things like log in and change your password. And we're gonna set up your website so the search engines can find you really easily. Then we're gonna start building your website. We're gonna choose the design that you like. Of course, you can customize it any way that you want, but it's just the basic design. Then I'm gonna show you how to add pages, so any custom pages that you want. I'm gonna show you how to change your navigation menu at the top and put in your logo. Then we're gonna design your pages. So first, I'm gonna do a quick overview of how everything works, and we're gonna be using a visual designer that's the best rated, most popular, and super easy to use. Then we're gonna go to Apple's website and Disney's website, and I'm gonna show you how to recreate those designs in your own website. And this is just to prove that you can literally make any design that you see and put it on your own website. But then I'm gonna show you that you don't actually need to design anything at all. People have already created these designs for you and you can mix and match into literally trillions of different designs. It's a much faster way of making a website and it's super easy. After that, we're gonna go over the contact page so people can fill out a form and contact you. Then I'm gonna show you how to make your website mobile friendly. It's super important because half of your website traffic is gonna be coming from desktop, but the other half is gonna be coming from people's phones. So it's super important that your website is mobile friendly. Then after that, I'm gonna show you how to get security so your website will be secure. And that's basically it. It's 27 really simple steps, all step by step. In the description below, all of the steps are time stamped so that you're never lost. And you can also download this Google Sheet so you can mark off your progress. You can also go to tyler.com. I've written out all of the steps right here for your convenience. And finally, I wanna say thank you to all of you who are watching. Nine years ago, no one made a video showing people step-by-step -step how to make a website. I'm reading a book on how to make a website, but really, who wants to read a book on how to make a website? So I decided to put one out and the response on the internet and on YouTube have been amazing. And I still have the most subscribers and the most views on a channel showing people how to make a website. And I just wanna say it really is a dream come true. So really thank you so much. And with that, you're already done with the first step of creating your website. So let's mark that off and let's begin. So the next thing that we're gonna learn is what is your domain name and what is your host? A domain name is your website name. For example, Google's domain name is google.com. So that's pretty easy to understand. Your domain name is your website name or your URL. But what is hosting? So let's check out and see what that is. So if we go to this really great drawing and illustration here, and we imagine someone typed in on their computer, so this is your computer right here, if someone typed in disney.com, that request, when you typed in disney.com and you press enter, would go to a disney.com computer, basically, and that computer holds all of the disney.com files and information, so all of the text, all of the images, and everything like that. And it sends all of the files and information and text and logo and images back to your computer. And that's when you would see the disney.com website. So that's why sometimes websites take a little while to load because there's the time that it takes to have the request 
and for that computer to send that request back with all of the files and information. So again, your domain name is your website name and hosting is where you store all of that information 24 hours a day. And this computer right here has super fast internet and again, connected 24 seven and it's called hosting or it's called your server because it serves up the information. So how much does all of this cost? Your domain name or website name cost about $15 per year. So that's like yourwebsite.com. And your hosting costs about $10 per month, but it can be as low as $3 per month. It can get really low if you apply the right discounts. So it can be as low as $30 a year, which is about $3 per month, or it can be about $10 per month if you go month to month. All right, so let's go get our domain name and hosting, and we can do that at the same place, hostgator.com. So if we go up here, we can type H-O-S-T, G-A-T-O-R dot C-O-M and press enter. So there are thousands and thousands of hosting companies and obviously I haven't tried all of them, but I have tried some bad ones and my website kept on crashing. So I recommend HostGator. You can see in my first YouTube videos nine years ago that I recommend HostGator and I've been using them for a total of 15 years and they're really great. In my first videos, I recommended HostGator because that's just who I was using. They wanted to offer my users a huge discount, the biggest discount on the internet. And they also wanted to give me a commission to thank me for recommending them. So it's really a win-win. I get paid to do what I love and you get the biggest discount. So thank you so much, I really do appreciate it. I really like HostGator because they have 24-7, 365 email, live chat, and phone support. They're a super stable company, so they're not just gonna be gone tomorrow. And they have a money back guarantee. So you have a whole bunch of options here, web hosting, website builder, WordPress hosting, VPS dedicated, and domains. And you would think that you'd use WordPress hosting, but actually it just comes with way too much stuff that you don't really need and it costs more money. And if you really do need all of those bells and whistles, you can always upgrade later. So what I recommend to do is just start with web hosting. So just click on web hosting. All right, if we scroll down, we're gonna see these three different plans, the hatching plan, the baby plan, and the business plan. But in order to get the discount, you actually have to go to hostgator.com forward slash unlock, U-N-L-O-C-K, and press enter. And then you can scroll down and those three plans are here. Again, the hatching plan, the baby plan, and the business plan, but that discount is unlocked. So the business plan, again, is just way too much stuff and you can always upgrade later. I don't think that you need it right now. So it really is between the hatching plan and the baby plan. The difference between the hatchling plan and the baby plan is the baby plan offers unlimited domain names. So you can have like yourwebsite.com, yourfriendswebsite.net, your mom's website.com. You can have unlimited domains on your single hosting package. With the hatchling plan, you can only have one domain on your hosting package, so like yourwebsite.com. But again, later you can always upgrade if you want to. So unless you're starting out with multiple domain names like yourwebsite.com and your other business.org, then I would just get the hatching plan and again you can always upgrade later if you need it. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to click on buy now. Once we do that, it's going to ask us two things. Do we want to register a new domain or do you already own a domain? If you click I already own this domain, maybe you already purchased a domain from somewhere like godaddy.com, you can enter it in right here. So you'd enter in I already own it.com, something like that. But since we're registering a new domain today, I'm just gonna click on register a new domain and I'm gonna enter it in right here. So mine is learn how to create a website.com. And here we can choose the extension. So do we want the .com or the .online site store website text space host? And of course, if your main domain name, what you want or your business name isn't available, then you can go with the .online or .org or .net. But I'm just gonna choose the .com. If we scroll down, we can see that they're gonna offer us all these other websites with different extensions. 
and I don't really think that you need them. It's not like someone's gonna go out there and copy your exact idea and get the .NET. That doesn't really happen. So we're just gonna stick with the .com. If we scroll down, it's gonna ask us, do we want domain privacy protection? Now what this does is when you register a domain name like yourbusiness.com, your name and email and phone number are available for someone to look up on the internet. And sometimes people will call you and sometimes you'll get emails, which is basically just spam and they'll say, hey, we can do this, this, and this for your website. Do you wanna buy my services? So it's a little annoying to get those emails and spam calls. Eventually they go away, but it is a little bit annoying. What this domain privacy protection does is hide all of that information so that they can't just look up your info and send you an email or call you. So some people get really annoyed with the spam calls and the emails but it doesn't bother me that much and I wanna save as much money as possible, so I'm just gonna uncheck this. Now if we scroll down, it's gonna ask us the package type, which should be Hatchling or Baby if you have more domain names, but we're just gonna stay with Hatchling. It's gonna ask us for your username and security pin, and then it's gonna ask us about the billing cycle. So if we click on this, you should see that it's 76% off for 12 months and 60% off for the one, three, six, 24, and 36 months. There are two ways to save the most money. If you go with the month to month, then that'll cost you about $10 upfront, and then $10 per month after that. But if you go for the entire year because it's 76% off, then the total cost for the entire year is gonna be about $30. Now, obviously, if you sign up for the entire year, $30 is much less expensive than $10 per month. But if you wanna pay the least upfront, then go with the month plan and it's $10 upfront and then $10 a month. So I think it's a lot smarter to go with the entire year at a time because it costs a little bit more, but you get the entire year. But it really just depends on your situation and it's up to you. If you don't see these big discounts up here, make sure to scroll down and make sure this unlock is here. So U-N-L-O-C-K and validate. And then if you scroll back up, you should see those discounts. All right, after that, put in your security pin, your email address, your first name, last name, your phone number, your address. I'm gonna say that I live in California because that's where I am right now. Put in your zip code. And then it asks you how you wanna pay with a credit card or PayPal. So I'm just gonna put credit card. Don't worry, this isn't my real credit card number. Then we're gonna scroll down and it's gonna ask us, do we wanna add additional services? I think you probably know by now what I'm gonna say, but let's go through them. The first one, do we want SSL? This is security for your website. It actually already comes free with your website, so I don't know what this is or why you would choose it. So we're gonna make sure that that is not checked. Then it says Site Lock Essentials. This basically just protects your website from hackers, but you can do that yourself for free, so I'm gonna uncheck that. Then do you want professional email help from Microsoft? You can already get email for free, and I would recommend getting it through Google if you were gonna pay for a service. Then it says, do we wanna back up our hard work? Again, you can do that for free yourself, so I'm just gonna uncheck that. Then do we want HostGator SEO tools? I don't even know what they would do. And I'm gonna show you how to get your website seen in the search engines. So we're gonna unmark that. All right, once we do that, we can see that the total is $31. If we went month to month, the total would be $10, but we're paying for an entire year at a time. So it's $31. And we get 24 seven, 365 phone, live chat and email, instant account activation, money back guarantee, our domain name and the hatchling plan at 12 months. Once we've confirmed all that, you can check off that you have read and agreed to HostGator's terms of service and click check out now. All right, so congratulations. You've probably done the hardest part, which is getting your domain name and hosting. So the next thing that we're gonna do is the fun part. We're gonna install WordPress. It used to be super hard to install WordPress and now it's really easy. All you have to do is go and click on Marketplace and we can scroll down until we see one-click installs and then click one-click installs. Once we do that, we're gonna see WordPress and that's what we're installing. So we're gonna click on WordPress and then it's gonna ask us to search for our domain name. So I have all of these different domain names here, but you probably only have one. So just choose the domain name that you wanna install WordPress on. 
and make sure this directory here is blank because if something is in it, then it's gonna install WordPress on yourwebsite.com forward slash something instead of just yourwebsite.com. We can take a look down here and we can see that their pros will do it for you for $399 or $199 or $99. And I'm gonna show you how to do all of this and more. So you're definitely saving a lot of money. So once you're ready, just click on next. And then let's put in your blog title. We can always change this later, but this is usually your business name. So I'm gonna put create a website and your user admin, that can be your name. So I'm just gonna put my name, Tyler, and your first name and last name, Tyler Moore. And I'm gonna put my email address, Tyler Moore at gmail.com. And then I'm gonna to agree to the terms of service and click install. Then WordPress is gonna install all the files and the software and everything onto your domain name right now. Once that's done, you would think you'd be able to go to your website right now, but if you go to your website right now, it's actually gonna be blank. So we can see that there's no real website right here. So I'm just gonna exit out of here, and your website's blank because it takes anywhere from two to 24 hours in order for your website to spread across the entire world. Sometimes it can take as little as a half an hour, so just keep on going back to your website and see if it works. But right now we're gonna do something very important. We're gonna copy all of this information right here, our username and password so that we have it so that we can log into our website. So we can just copy it and print it out and put it somewhere just to make sure that we have it. You will also get an email right now to your email address saying that you've just installed WordPress. And if you forget your password, you can always go to your email and say, I forgot my password. All right, so I'm gonna take a little break right now. I'm actually gonna close this tab here because we don't need it anymore. I'm gonna take a little break right now and when I come back, I'm gonna check my website and see if it works. All right, so now we have the website right here. So I'm just gonna open up a new tab and type in learnhowtocreateawebsite.com. And it says website coming soon. And that's the exact thing that we wanna see because we know that WordPress is now installed. Now all we have to do is log in. In order to log in, we can go back to this page right here and see our username, which is Tyler or your name and our password. So I'm just gonna copy my password right now. And then I'm gonna go back to my website and type in yourwebsite.com forward slash WP dash admin. That's WP dash A-D-M-I-N, or you can just click on this button right here and press enter. I wanted to show you the WP dash admin because then you'll always know how to get to the back end of your website. All right, so once you're here, again, you'd copy that username, which is Tyler. It's already in there for me. And, but you know, you can type in right here and the password, which is this crazy password. So we copy that and we go here and we paste it in here. So we paste it in and press log in. All right, once we do that, it's gonna ask us, is this email address correct? And I'm gonna say, yes, this email is correct. And finally, we're logged in into what's called the dashboard of our website. So we can go to this tab and we can close it as long as we've copied down this password. And the first thing that I like to do is actually create a new password. So in order to do that, we are gonna go to users over here on the left side and we're gonna scroll down and we can see my name right here. It'll probably say your name. Click on edit. Then we can scroll down all the way to the bottom and press generate password. And I'm just gonna put in a new password. I'm gonna hide it so the internet doesn't hack me. And I'm gonna put in a new password and then press update profile. Now we have a new password on our website and everything is looking good. The next thing that I wanna do is delete plugins so that everyone is on the same page. But what are plugins? Plugins help you extend the functionality of WordPress. It's like having an app on your phone. For example, by default, WordPress doesn't have a contact form. So you install a free contact form plugin and now you have the ability to have a contact form right on your website, even though by default, WordPress doesn't have a contact form. You can also get SEO plugins. By default, WordPress's SEO isn't that great, but you can install a plugin that makes it really, really good. You can also install a security plugin or a backup plugin. Basically, it's like programs on your computer or an app on your phone. Pretty easy to understand. So then why do we wanna delete all of these plugins? If we look right here, 
we can see all of this crap basically right here. And what is all of this stuff? It's just like your computer. Sometimes you get a computer and it has all this extra software on it called bloatware. For example, maybe you didn't download Norton Antivirus, but for some reason, when you get a new laptop, Norton Antivirus is on the computer. Whoever made that computer got paid in order to put Norton Antivirus on it because Norton knows that a certain percent of people will actually buy it if it's installed on 10,000 people's computer. And the same thing happens with hosts. They get paid in order to put all of this stuff right here on it, but we don't want to be a part of that. We're not mad at them for doing it. They need to make money, but we just want to start off fresh and clean. So how do we get rid of all the stuff that we don't want? Well, it's super simple. All we have to do is go to plugins, scroll down a little bit, Click this box, which will select all of the plugins. And in order to delete the plugins, you need to deactivate them first. So we're going to click up here and click deactivate, then apply. We're going to wait for all of the plugins to deactivate. And then we're going to click this button again to select all of them and go up here and press delete, then apply. Then press OK. And this will delete all of the necessary plugins so that everyone is starting off clean. And now if we go back to our dashboard, we can see that we have a nice, fresh, clean installation of WordPress. Birthday. Today is day 23 of quarantine, and it's also my birthday. And I've received some new things for my birthday, like some nice clothes, a basketball, some cards, this thing, some shoes, and a mask for security. And just like I got new things for my birthday, today we're gonna be updating WordPress so that you get all the latest features, but also like this mask so that you get the latest security. Security is very important so hackers don't hack your website. And that's why we wanna update WordPress so that we get the latest features and the best security. It's super easy, let's do it. So all you have to do is go over here and click on updates. And if we didn't have the latest version of WordPress, it'll say update now. There'll be a button right here and you just click on update. But since we already have the latest version, we don't need to do anything. We can check again if we want, but we are all up to date. So that's all we have to do for updating WordPress. And now we can just check it off. So now that we've changed our password and updated WordPress, we can take a look at our website. So we can roll over right here and click visit site. So now we can see this is what our website looks like. And obviously this looks really crappy, but some web developers would have charged you $99 or $150 or $500 just to get here. We're gonna obviously make this website look so much better, but basically your website is up. It looks terrible, but it's up. And it actually made us a sample page. So if we click here on hello world, it's gonna show us a hello world page. But we can see on this page that it's ourwebsite.com forward slash index dot php forward slash 2019 forward slash 29 dash hello world comment number one. And what is all of that junk? For example, if we go to apple.com, we'll see apple.com forward slash Mac. Or if we go to Airbnb, it's airbnb.com forward slash invite to invite a friend. So why on our website do we see all of this stuff and it looks like a jumbled mess? And that's because our permalinks aren't set up correctly. To set up your permalinks, it's super easy. All you have to do is hover over your website name up here and click on dashboard. And once we're on our dashboard, just go down to settings and go to permalinks. Now we can see that it's set to custom structure, but we want it to be set to post name. So just click on post name scroll down and click save changes. Once we do that, we can again visit our website by hovering over your website name and clicking on visit website. And we can go back down to that hello world post and click on it. And now we can see our URL is yourwebsite.com forward slash hello dash world, which is much better. If you have a about page or a contact page, it'll just be forward slash about or forward slash contact instead of forward slash index.php forward slash about. So in my opinion, this looks much better and this is what big businesses do. They make their website URLs super clean instead of making them look all jumbled and messed up. So right now, this is what your website looks like. It's not that fancy or impressive, but we're gonna make it look much better. To get to the back end of your website, hover over your website name and click on dashboard.
The next thing that we're gonna do is change your website's title and tagline. So what is a title and tagline? The title is the title of your website, usually your business name, and the tagline describes your business. So let's look at an example. If we go back to our website here and click visit site, we can see that our title is create a website and our tagline is just another WordPress website. So the title is usually the name of your business and the tagline describes what your business does or what you can offer the customer. That can be a little bit confusing, so let's look at some examples. If we go to Neil Patel's website, he's one of the best digital marketers out there. We can look at his title and tagline if we hover over here and it says Neil Patel, helping you succeed through online marketing. So the Neil Patel is his title, and then helping you succeed through online marketing is his tagline. But what does that look like in the search engines? So if we Google his name, we can see what that looks like in the search engine. So it says Neil Patel, helping you succeed through online marketing. There's the title right there, and the tagline is right here. Let's look at a few more examples. We have Tyler, this is my website. So Tyler is my title and learn how to create a website is my tagline. With Slack, the title is Slack. It's over here on the right side, and the tagline is where work happens. For Zoom, the title is at the end again, Zoom, and their tagline is video conferencing, web conferencing, webinars, screen sharing. For Airbnb, their title is Airbnb. Again, it's at the end. And their tagline is vacation rentals, homes, experiences, and places. So it basically just describes everything that they do. We can go back to our website and we can change our title and tagline. And to do that, all you have to do is click on customize, then go to site identity. And there's our title right there, create a website. And our tagline is just another WordPress site, which isn't that great. I'm just gonna describe what we do, which is learn how to create a website. Once we do that, we can click on publish and exit out of there. And now when we hover over our website, we can see that the title is create a website, which would usually be your business name. And the tagline is describing what your business does. And we show people how to learn how to create a website. So that's it. That's how you change your title and tagline. All right, so we're done changing our title and tagline so we can mark that off. The next thing that we're gonna do is install a new theme. So what is a theme? A theme is the design of your website. It's how everything is arranged on your website. So here we have the default WordPress theme and it doesn't look very great. It's very clean and simple, but it's not exactly the best thing for your website. Before, themes used to be really specific. So if you're making a real estate website, you'd have a real estate theme. If you're making a personal training website, you'll have a personal training theme. If you're making a contractor website, you'd have a contractor theme. But now because the page builder is so flexible and you can place any element anywhere, we now have a single theme that can literally be anything. And that theme is called Astra, and in my opinion, it's the best theme that there is. To get Astra, all you have to do is hover over your website name and go to dashboard, then just go to appearance and go to themes. Once we do that, we can click on add new. And over here where it says search themes, we can type in Astra, A-S-T-R-A, -A, and press enter. Then we can view the theme, make sure it's Astra and not Astral, and click details and preview. And we can see it has 3,596 ratings, five out of five stars, and it's just really good. So go ahead and click on install. And then we can click on activate. Once we do that, we can now hover over our website name and click on visit website. And we can see that the design is different. Now I know this doesn't look that much better, but it is so much better. You're just gonna have to trust me on this, that this is one of the best themes out there and it's gonna allow you to make anything. So now that we're done installing the Astra theme, the next thing that we're gonna do is install the Starter Templates plugin. But what is the Starter Templates plugin? Instead of looking at a website that's blank like we see right here, it gives you a really good starting point on your website. So it'll put in a logo right here, it'll put in a menu right here, it'll put in all of this content right here, 
and it'll set up a whole bunch of different pages on your website. Now, of course, you can do this yourself. You can do it all from scratch and get the same result, but it's so much easier to start somewhere rather than starting from a blank page. So how do we get the starter templates? It's super easy. All we have to do is hover over to our dashboard, and then we can hover over plugins and click add new. Then after that, we can go to this right side and we can search starter templates, S-T-A-R-T-E-R-T-E-M-P-L-A-T-E-S. -E 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 then we can see the starter templates by brainstorm force. And all we have to do is click install now. Once we do that, then we could click on activate. And once we do that, we can go ahead and roll over appearance and then click on starter templates. Now we have all of these different page builders to choose from Elementor, Beaver Builder, Gutenberg, and Breezy, and you would think that they're all sort of the same, but one is clearly so much better than the rest, and that is Elementor. So we're gonna go ahead and choose Elementor, and now we can see all of these different starter templates that we can use as a starting point. And we can see that there are tons and tons of templates. Some of them cost money, but most of them are absolutely free. If we go up right here to this drop down and we click on free, we can see all of the free templates. So this is awesome. They give you all of these templates absolutely free and you can use them as a really great starting point. Some of these templates are blogs, some of these templates are online stores, and some of these templates are regular websites. But just because you choose a regular website or you choose a blog or you choose an online store, that doesn't mean that that template can't be converted to anything else. So you can convert a blog template to an online store or an online store template to a regular website or a regular website to an online store website or a regular website to a blog website. So anything that you choose can be converted to anything else pretty easily. So for this website, we're just gonna choose a regular website. And what I mean by a regular website is one without a blog or an online store, but just know that you can add a blog or an online store or anything else later. So this mountain template right here is my favorite. I think it's a perfect starting place. So all we have to do is go ahead and click on it and we can see all of the different pages it has right here. And after we check out this template and make sure that we like it, we can import complete site. So now it's gonna ask us some questions if we wanna delete our previously imported site, which we would check off if we had previously imported a site, but we wanna delete it and start all over and import this website. All of the default check marks are correct, so we're just gonna press import and it's gonna import that entire website. So now it's gonna import your entire website. It's gonna take between two and 10 minutes. So it's importing all of the images, all of the text. It's installing any plugins you need like the contact form plugin. It's installing the header at the top of your website and the footer at the bottom of your website. And it's putting in all of your pages. All right, so it's done importing your website. Now all we have to do is click on view site and we can exit out of here. And now our website is looking really good. Let's take a look. We have a logo that obviously we're gonna change. We have this menu up here. We have all of this text. We have these buttons. We have these images that look really cool. Our service one, two, and three. Don't worry if you don't have services, you just have products, that's fine. We can always change this to anything we want later, which we will. We have this paragraph here and this button and this call to action down here these images like an image gallery, and this footer down here that has more information about our company, and this copyright down here also. All right, so we can scroll up and we can see our about page, and this looks really clean and awesome also, and we can see our services page with service one, two, and three, which looks great, and an FAQ, which looks really cool and we can see our contact page. And we have this awesome contact form right here where you can fill this out and you press submit and it goes right into your email. So you get the message right in your email inbox. Then you can have all your info over here like email address and phone numbers and business hours. And then we have the map down here. And of course you could change this to your address or any address that you want, or you can delete it. If we scroll back up, we can go ahead and click on this logo up here. I just want to mention again that everything here is customizable. You can make this template look like any other template that you want or any other design that you see on the internet. It's totally and completely customizable. I just think it's much better to start off with a website already built than you can change things rather than starting off blank. It just takes so much time and it's really not worth it.
and it just makes building a website really enjoyable instead of super scary. All right, so we're all done installing the starter template plugin, and now you have a website that you can almost be proud of. The next thing that we're gonna do is change your website theme style. The theme style is the overall style of your website. So it's like the type of font that you use, the colors that you use, and what your buttons look like. So let's look at an example. If we check out the Disney Plus website, we're gonna see that this title and this paragraph are the same font and colors as this title and this paragraph and as this title and this paragraph. So all of the titles and all the paragraphs throughout the entire website are the same. They have the same style. You probably don't want your website to have all different fonts and all different sizes and all different colors because it would be really hard to read and it would look super disorganized. Which brings us back to our website. How do we change the theme style for our website so we can control how all of the fonts, buttons, and colors look? So the way we do that is we go up here and we click Edit with Elementor. Then we go over here to this menu and we click on Theme Style. And we can change the background for our entire website right here, but let's first do typography, which is just a fancy way of saying our font. So how would we change this area right here? This is a heading and this is a heading. How would we change that so it changed on all of our website? Right here is our main heading, it's our heading one, and here is our secondary heading, it's our heading two. If we go over here and we scroll down, we can see H1, which stands for heading one, and we can go ahead and click on the typography pencil and we can scroll down and we can change the size of that heading. And now that will change across your entire website. So anywhere that there's a heading one, it's gonna change on all of the different pages. We can also do the same thing with a heading two. All we have to do is go to H2 and go to typography and we can change the size of that also. We can also change the font family. It's super easy, we just go up here and we can choose between 600 different fonts. So they have all of these different fonts. I'll show you a crazy one. We'll look at rock salt. And we can see that that's changed up here. And if we scroll down to our website, we can see that it's changed here also and here also. So it changes throughout all of your website wherever there is an H2 or a heading 2. So again, we can go here and we can change that back to Lato if we want and that looks pretty cool. Or we can do a, another crazy one, which is permanent marker, and we see that it changed in all of the different places that it's supposed to change. We can also change the body text, which is the same thing as the paragraph text. So if we scroll up a little bit, we can see body right here. And if we click on typography, we can again change the font family. Let's look at another one. Let's look at Russo one and that's gonna change all of the body text that looks a little spacey, so that's kinda of cool. And it changed it down here also, and it changed it right here too. Or you can go with the more normal one and click on here, and let's go with something like Roboto, which I think Google uses. And we can see this is the Roboto text. It looks a lot more normal. We can also change the typography of any links. So if there's any links like these services right here, we can go ahead and go under link and click on the typography here. And we could change the font family here. Let's change it to permanent marker and we can see that those links have changed. If we don't like any of our changes, we can obviously just exit the page without saving, without pressing this update button right here. Or what we can do is press Control Z on a PC or Command Z on a Mac to undo all of our changes. So let's do that right here. Just keep on pressing it until we get back to where we started. And I wanna show you one more change. If we scroll down right here, we can see this button and we can scroll down to buttons and open this up. And we can change the text color. Let's change it to pink and we can change the box shadow. So let's change that. There's a little shadow on it. We can make it bigger, or a different position, or more blurry, or less blurry. That looks pretty wild. 
And we can also change the color of the border. So we go here and we can change the border color also to a pink if we want. And now that we have that and that looks pretty wild, we can also change how we can hover over it and that's easy by clicking on this hover. So we can make the background color again a pink again if we want. And now when we hover over it, it will be pink. So we have complete control over all of that, but what happens if we scroll up and we look at these buttons right here? We can see that not all of the settings were applied to these buttons, and that's because the theme style affects the overall website, but on any web page individually, you have more control over all the settings. And obviously a little bit later, we're gonna go over how to change everything on every page specifically, all of your content, and make it so that we have even more control over all the settings like these buttons right here that weren't affected and all the content on each page. So if you wanted to save all of those changes, all you have to do is click on update. I don't wanna save those changes, so I'm just gonna exit out of here and I'm gonna press discard. Then I can go back to my website, my main website, and press leave. And none of those changes would have applied, but obviously you can apply those changes and your entire website will take on the theme styles and changes that you have chosen. So now we're gonna keep on molding and shaping our website exactly how we want it. The next thing that I'm gonna show you how to do is how to add and delete pages. So we can see all of our pages here are home, about, services, and contact but maybe we don't need this services page, so how do we delete that? Or maybe you wanna add an FAQ or a pricing page, so how do we add that? We can see on Tony Robbins' website, he doesn't have home about services and contact. Everything is tailored to what he's doing, like doing coaching or having a store. And in the same way, we can make our website like that. We can tailor it to exactly how we need it to be for our business. So right now, I'm not only gonna show you how to delete the pages that you don't want, but the absolute best way on how to add pages that you do want. The new way is a much better way to add pages and really have a professional design as the starting point. Then you can customize it however you want. So first up, let me show you how to delete the pages that you don't want. To do that, all you have to do is hover over your website name and go to dashboard. And once we're in the dashboard, we can go ahead and click on pages. And if we scroll down, we can see all of our different pages. So we have our home, about, contact, services, but we also have this extra sample page. And if we click view page, we can see that it's just a sample page and it doesn't look that great and it doesn't add anything to our website. So if we go back, we can actually delete this page. So if we go right here, we can hover over the sample page and click trash. That'll put it in the trash and we can go ahead and click on trash. We can scroll down and we can press delete permanently. And this will delete it completely from your website. So now that you've learned how to delete pages, and of course you can delete any of your pages like your about, your services, or your contact if you wanted. Now let's learn how to add pages and it's super easy. So we're just gonna go up here and press add new. Once that happens, it's gonna ask you for a title and this is the title of your page. So this is gonna be like why us or about or services or pricing, whatever your page is called. We're just gonna add it right here, so I'm just gonna type why us. Once we do that, there is one more step to do, and that's because our header on the top where our navigation menu is, is transparent. We need to tell this page that we have a transparent header so that the content of our page will go behind the header. And this will make more sense when I show you. So to do that, we need to scroll down here, and we can scroll down to transparent header, and we need to enable it. Once that's done, we're gonna edit with Elementor up here and click on that. And now we have a blank page that we can add things to, but we don't just wanna start off blank. That's just mainly a waste of time. They've made so many different designs that we can choose from, that we can mix and match and make trillions of different possible combinations as a starting point. And that's really what I recommend to do. It's much better. So to do that, all we're gonna do is press on this A right here, this little symbol. And now it's gonna give us all of the websites to choose from and we can add any of those individual pages to our page. So we can go over here and press free so we can see all of the free ones. And let's just click on this first one. 
So we can click on it and maybe we like this about page for our why us page. So we can just click on that and we can check it out. Then we can import this template. Now that probably saved you hours and hours of time, which is really awesome. And one of the really cool things about this is that it also took on the style of our website. So if we look at this who we are right here, that text has the same style as our website. It took on the same exact font and so did all the sections down here. It took on the same font and the same size. So all of your website now looks consistent. And that's why we change the style first because then all of the pages on your website will now look consistent throughout and have the same fonts. So we can easily change this by just clicking on it and typing in why us. You can also mix and match different sections by scrolling down and clicking on this A again. And maybe we want to change this page to a pricing page. So let's scroll down and look for something that would have a pricing page. Maybe this car right here. And we can see a wash menu right here so we can click on it. And all we want from this is this pricing box right here. So we don't have to make it. It'll save us hours of time and we can import the template. So now that that's imported, we can scroll down and we can see that it took on the style of the button that we made before, which is really cool because now our website is super consistent with the style. But it also added this up here, which we don't want, but we can easily hover over it and exit out of it. And again, we can go down here, hover over, exit out. And now we just have this pricing box. Maybe we wanna move this pricing box up under here. So that's super easy. All we have to do is click, hold, and drag right here. And we see that blue and we let it go. And now we have our pricing box right here. So this is what our website looks like. Maybe we would change this to pricing and we can have that. If we didn't want any of those changes, again, command Z on a Mac or control Z on a PC, we'll just undo that and I'll keep on undoing it. And we can also exit out of here for these. If we don't want this, change that back to why us. And again, our why us is back to normal. If we want to save all those changes, all we have to do is press publish. And if we want to preview those changes, all we have to do is click on this I right here. And we can see we have a why us page and it looks pretty awesome. We can see that the URL looks a little bit funky because it has all of this question mark preview, but we can just get rid of that. And we can see that the why us page is our website.com forward slash why dash us, which looks great. And we've now created a new page on our website. You might notice a problem now though, the why us page isn't up here, so we don't have any access to it. So if a visitor comes to our website, there's no way of accessing it. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the next section. This section wasn't intended to show you how to actually change everything on the individual pages. It was just there to show you how to get a general design and again, continue molding and shaping your website. We're going to get more and more specific and eventually I'm going to show you how to do all of the little details and change everything on the individual page. But next up is how to get this why us page into the navigation. So let's do that. So we're going to add the page that we made right here into our navigation. And we're also going to learn about the different styles of navigation. But first, let's look at the navigation of some of the best companies in the world to see what they have in common. If we see Slack right here, we can see the logo up top to the left and the navigation up here to the right. If we look at Apple, logo up top to the left, navigation up here to the right. Microsoft, logo up here to the left, navigation on the right, and Disney, logo up here on the top left, and navigation on the right. But why? Why are all the logos on the left side and the navigation on the right side? Why don't we have some logos in the middle and the navigation below, or some logos on the right and the navigation on the left? Well, the first reason is that it's just convention. When everyone starts to do it in a particular way, people get used to it, and then it makes using a website really easy. The second reason is because it saves a lot of space. If we have the Disney logo up here on the top, and then the navigation below it, it would push all of this content down. And people aren't on the Disney website to look at the Disney logo. 
They're on the Disney website to look and find the content that they're looking for. So in this way, it's as space saving as possible to have the logo and the navigation on the same line. All right, so now that we can see that our website is the same with the logo up here in the top and the navigation to the right of it, let's learn how to put this Why Us page up here in the navigation and let's learn how to change some settings. To do that is super easy. All we have to do is click on Customize up here and we can scroll down until we see Menus. Click on that, then go to Navigation. Then we can see our home about services and contact and that reflects this home about services and contact. To add this why us page is super easy. All we have to do is click on add items. Then you'll see this why us under pages and just click the plus button. To change it to all capital like the other links up here, we can just click on it and we could rename it to capital Y capital us. And now we can see on the right side, we have the home about services contact and why us. But what happens if we want the why us after the about instead of the last item? It's super easy to do that too. We can just minimize this, click, hold and drag and drag it right under about and that will rearrange it right here. We can also make the why us a sub menu by clicking and holding it and dragging it to the right to indent it a little bit. And now when we hover over about, there's a why us page here, but it looks really funny and it's all white because we haven't changed the link color. And I'll show you how to do that next. All right, but I don't actually want this why us page, so I'm just gonna delete it. So I'll go here and scroll down and press remove. And now let's learn how to change the colors of the actual links so that we can change the links and also change the sub menu link color. To do that, we can go back and back again, and then go to header and transparent header, because we have a transparent header up here. Click on that, and we can scroll down to colors and background, and if we click on it, we can make the background a different color by clicking on this, and we can see that that's now a color. We can clear it again to make that color transparent, and we can change the site title, the menu, and the submenu color. This is what we would need to change in order for that submenu not to be blank and for you to be able to see the text. So you would click on this and you would change the link text color to black instead of white so it wasn't see-through. So that's how you change the color of the menu. The next thing that we're gonna do is change the style of the menu. So just go back and we can click on primary header and this is how you change the style of it. So we can have that logo in the center. Again, I don't recommend it. Or we can have that logo to the right. And again, I don't recommend that. Unless, of course, it is standard in your country to have the logo on the right side and the menu on the left side, then you can do it. But for me and most people, I think the logo should be on the left side and the menu on the right side. But that's how to change it anyways. There's just one more thing to change now, and that is the button at the top right here. And in order to do that, all we have to do is click on back and click primary menu. And we can see that the last menu item is a button, but we can change that to search. So now people can search our website, or we can change that to none so that there's nothing up there, or we could change it back to button. Now, maybe I want this call to action button up here to be the contact for our website. So how would we do that? Well, the link for our contact page is ourwebsite.com forward slash contact. So we would need to put the link in right here. So we just put forward slash contact. And for the button text, maybe we would type in contact. Then we can scroll down and we can customize the button style and we can change the color of it. So maybe we want to change the color a little bit. And then we can press publish and we can exit out of here and we can see now we have changed that contact button color and that looks pretty good except for now there are two contacts so we have home about services contact and contact and you should know already how to get rid of this contact but just in case you don't we can go to customize then go to menus then click the navigation and just go to contact and we can remove this right here then after we do that, we can click on publish and exit out of there. And now we have our home about services and contact button right here. If we click on contact, it will go to our contact page. 
So sometimes having that button up there is a much cooler way to have your main call to action. And it really just will encourage people to contact you or go to your store page or do whatever you want them to do. So now we can go back to the home page by clicking on this logo up here. And that's how you change your navigation. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to work on this logo. So I'm going to show you how to create a logo and insert the logo into your website. So we can take a look at Microsoft's logo and we see that they have their logo right here and then the text Microsoft here. If we look at Airbnbs, we can see that the logo is right here and the text is to the right. Slack logo up here, text to the right. Apple just has their logo and no text. And Nike also just has their logo and no text. And PayPal has their logo up here and text to the right. The most amount of colors in these logos is four, and overall the logos are super simple. And that's how I recommend that you make your own logo, make it super simple and not too many colors. And also just have an icon or the icon on the left side and your text on the right side. Or it can say just your business name and have no icon at all. So now I'm going to show you how to insert your logo or insert and create your logo if you don't already have a logo. So all we have to do is click on customize. Then go to header and click site identity. Now we can see our logo right here and it's hard to see because it's white and our logo is transparent. To change the logo, all we have to do is click on change logo and then we can upload our logo right here. If we don't have a logo yet, I'm going to show you how to make one really quick. All we have to do is open up a new tab and go to photop.com. That's P-H-O-T-O. PEA.com. This is a free online Photoshop clone, but if you already have Photoshop, obviously use Photoshop. But for people who don't have Photoshop or just want to make something really quickly, you can use photop.com. All right, so we're just going to click on File and go to New, and we could rename it. We could rename it to Logo. And for the background, we want to choose Transparent and then press Create. We're choosing a transparent background because if we go back and look at our website, we can see that this logo is transparent in the background. So basically it's white right here and the text is white, but we can see through the logo. So that's why we're choosing transparent here. And this is what transparent looks like. They give you this checkered background right here. All right, so let's make some new text. All we have to do is click on this T right here and then click on the canvas and we can start typing. I'm just going to capitalize everything and type in mountain. All right, but that looks a little bit too small, so I'm going to highlight all of the text and go up here and change the size. Another and maybe easier way to change the size is just to click on this pointer icon up here, adjust the size on these adjustments on the corners. So we just click and hold but as you can see this gets distorted so it doesn't keep the same ratio in order to keep the same ratio all we have to do is click shift and it will scale proportionately so once we do that we can get it to a size that we want like right there and click on the pointer again and we can move it around so now that we have the mountain that looks pretty good but we want to change the color to white because that would look best on our website so again, we can click on the T for text and highlight everything. And then up here, we can go to the color and we can change that to white and press OK. So it's a little hard to see, but it has our mountain text right there. The next thing that I want to do is get a mountain icon. To do that, let's open up a new tab and let's search on iconfinder.com. I C O N f-i-n-d-e-r dot c-o-m. So now that we're here, all we have to do is search for mountain or something else, and we can make it free. So click on the free, and I wanted to search for mountain, because maybe we're not doing two of them. And we have all of these free icons that we can use in our website. So I'm just gonna click on the first one, and I'm gonna download the icon in SVG. So we click and it downloads, then I'm gonna open up Photo P and I'm gonna drag that icon to the canvas. And it'll show up right here and all we have to do is click and hold and resize, but again, it'll get distorted. So we can hold shift 
and it will resize proportionately. And then use this to move it to the correct area. And again, hold shift while you're resizing. And maybe we'll do it right there. All right, and that looks pretty good, except for our icon is black, and maybe we want our icon to be white. So all we have to do is go over here and double click our icon to go into it, and double click onto that layer, then change the color right here, and we'll change that to white and press OK. So now we can see that that icon is white. We can go to a file, and, and we can save the smart object, or press Control S on a PC or Command S on a Mac. And that will save it. Then when we go back to our logo, we can see that that icon has updated to the white color. The next thing that we have to do for this is crop it because it's too big right here and it'll make our icon look really small if we don't crop it. So to crop it, it's super easy. All we have to do is click on this crop button here and then just crop it where we want to crop it. Just click, hold and drag. And once we do that, we can adjust it and make it a little bit tighter. I like to keep a little bit of empty space on the sides, but not too much. And that looks pretty good. And we can press enter and it'll crop it perfectly. There's one last thing to do before we can save our logo and that's to change the font of the text. So we can click on this T for text, highlight it, and we can search for a font. Now there are hundreds and hundreds of fonts, but let's just go with Montserrat. And we can click on it and that will change the font. And we could just keep it as regular, but we can make it bold or semi bold or anything like that. And we can see that our crop is not good anymore. So we want to recrop it. So let's click this and recrop it. And let's make it a little bit bigger. Press enter and click crop again and we'll just adjust it until it's perfect. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now let's save this. To save it, we wanna save it as a PNG because a PNG has a transparent background. If you saved it as the file JPEG or GIF, it may not have a transparent background. So we go to file and we can save or export as a PNG, not JPEG, not PDF, but PNG. And that'll make sure it has a transparent background. All right, so we'll just save it. We can see that it downloads. We can now exit out of this and we can go to our website. We can change our logo. So we're gonna click change logo. We're gonna click hold and drag that to our website and we're gonna select it. Then it's gonna ask us, do we wanna crop it or not? No, we don't wanna crop it because we already cropped it. And then it's gonna ask us, do we wanna use a different logo for retina devices? What this does is it has a higher resolution logo you can upload if you want on retina devices, on devices with really high screen resolution. I don't think we need to do this because our logo is already a pretty high resolution. So we can uncheck that. And we can see that our mountain logo is right there and it looks pretty cool. We can make it a little bit bigger if we want by adjusting this. And to me, that looks pretty awesome for the amount of time we put into it. The next thing that we're gonna do is make your fave icon. Your fave icon is that little icon up in the tab of your website. We can see photo peas right here, this little icon, Apple right here, Airbnbs right here, Microsoft's right here, Slack, and PayPal. What this does is that it helps your users find your website easily when they have multiple tabs opened. So if we imagine that we have 10 more tabs opened all right here, you wouldn't be able to see Apple written out or Vacation Rentals written out or Microsoft written out. You would only be able to see this icon and that will help the user switch between and know what they're clicking. This is called a site icon or a fave icon and it's super easy to make, but it has to be an exact dimension and it has to be 512 by 512. So let's see how to do that. So we can go back to photo P so we can see our icon right here and that's all we want. We just want this icon because it puts in this text automatically. So let's again click into our icon by double clicking and we have this icon right here. It's not gonna show up blue. This is just the outline to show that it's selected. 
but we need this to be cropped exactly 512 by 512. And we actually need it not to be white because if it's white, it won't show up because this is white also, so we won't be able to see it. So let's change the color to gray by double clicking on this and clicking on it and then making it a dark gray. Press OK. And now we need to crop it exactly 512 by 512. So we'll go to image and we'll go to canvas size and we can see that it's 800 by 800. So I'm just going to type in 512 by 512 and press OK. Once we do that, we're going to see that it's cut off. So again, just click on this right here and click hold and drag and hold shift. So it drags proportionately and just adjust it until it's perfect. So that looks pretty good. Let's press enter and let's go to file and we're going to export as again a PNG. Then press save. And now we have that PNG. We can go back to our website and we can select the icon for our website. And we can just either select files or click hold and drag right here. And we have that in there and we press select and it'll give us a message that it needs to be 512 by 512, which it is. And we can see it right here. And we can also see our icon right here. And that looks super cool. Once we're done with that, we can click on publish exit out of there. And now we have a logo in our site icon, which looks awesome. And that's how you create your logo and site icon or fave icon. So now the fun part, editing your actual website. So you can go to any page like your about page and click edit with Elementor and we can edit anything on this website. Then we can go back and click on services and edit anything on this web page also by again clicking on edit with Elementor and editing anything here. Then we can go back again and so on. So you get the point. You can edit any page by simply clicking on it and then clicking on edit with Elementor. So today I'm going to show you how to edit the home page, but obviously like we just did, you can apply this to any page that you want. You can apply it to the about page, a services page, a contact page, or a new page that you make. I'm just going to show you how to edit the home page so that we're not jumping around from page to page to page while you're learning new things. So again, all we have to do is click edit with Elementor. And first I want to show you in general how everything works. So we're first going to do a general overview and then I'm going to show you specifically how to change things. So the basic principle is whatever you click on the right side, you can edit on the left side. So we can click on this and edit it here. We can click on this text up here and edit it here. We can click on this paragraph and edit it over here. We can click on these buttons and edit here. We can even click on this entire section if we click on this or you can right click it and we can edit it over here. So again, we can scroll down and if we click on this, we can see it not only on the left side, but it actually tells you up here what you're editing. So you're editing the heading. Same thing with this. It says you're editing the text editor. You click on this and it says you're editing the button. And again, we can click on the entire section right here and it says we're editing the section or if we scroll up, we can click on this column and we're editing this column. So there are basically three main things that you can edit, widgets or elements, which is just like your text, your headings, your paragraphs, your buttons. You can also edit entire sections and you can edit columns. You can also click, hold and drag columns and sections around to rearrange them. And you can do that with entire sections also. So click, hold and drag and drag it up here. You can always press Control Z on a PC or Command Z on a Mac to undo. And of course, if you don't like an entire section, you can always exit out. And again, you can undo Control Z or Command Z if you mess up. If we scroll up, then click on any of the elements on the page. On the left side, we're going to have three different options, content, style, and advanced. The content is like the text that you want to write. The style is like the design, the color and the font size. In advanced is advanced options like spacing or cool motion effects. So again, we can click on any of these different elements and we have the content, style 
and advanced options. And that gives us all of the options that we need in order to control all of the settings to make it look exactly how we want it to look. But you probably don't only want to edit sections, you probably want to add new sections and elements to it also. To do that, we want to scroll down all the way to the bottom and click on this plus button. Once you do that, you're going to get these different options. Do you want one column, two columns, three, four, five, six? If we scroll up, we can see that this is just one column. There's just one column here. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see that this is three. One, two, three. Scroll down more, we can see that this is two, one on the left side, one on the right side. This is one again, and this is three, one, two, three. And if we go to the Apple website, we can see that this is one column here. This is three columns, one, two, three. This is two columns, one and two. This is one column right here, and you get the point. So again, we're just gonna click on this, and we're gonna add in one column. So we added our column, but nothing is actually in it. So in order to add different elements inside this section, all we have to do is click on this button right here, and we can add all of these different elements right here. And that will allow us to make practically any website that we want. To add it, all we have to do is click, hold, and drag, and drag it into this section. And if we want something else, we can click on this button, and we can keep on adding things. We can add a text editor, a video, buttons, a divider, a spacer, Google Maps, icons, a gallery, a counter, social media icons, a progress bar. You can add testimonials, tabs, icon lists, accordion boxes, and so much more. And once we've added all of these things, we can click on them and we can edit the content style in advance to look like anything that we want. So we can make it look like anything up here or practically anything from any website ever. So now that we understand the general philosophy of how everything works, let's actually practice and see what we can do. So whatever type of website you're making, you can probably find another website that has inspiration or ideas that you can grab from. So if you're a carpenter or a personal trainer or you wanna be a web developer, there's websites out there that you can take ideas from. So let's start with something easy. If we see this Apple website, we can see this headline right here and we can see the sub headline up here. So now all we have to do is scroll down, click on this plus button to make a new section and click on one column right here. So we can see on the Apple website that this is a heading right here, and all we have to do is go back to our website, click on this right here, the elements button, and then we can click, hold, and drag this heading to this right side. The heading right now defaults to an H2, which is a heading two, but we can make it default to H1, which is the main heading. And usually the H1 is much bigger and then the H2 is a little bit smaller, three smaller, four, five, and six is the smallest. And then of course we can type up here. Maybe we can type, you are going to do something amazing. And we can see by default that it capitalizes each of the first letters of every word. And that is there by default. And if we wanted to change that, we can change that again in the theme style section. Or what we can do if we want to control this individually is we can go to style, then go to typography, and under transform, we can go to normal. So that will just capitalize everything how you typed it. All right, so if we look back at Apple's website, we can see that this is centered and this is even more bold. So let's try to do that. To bold it, we need to go over to weight and we can click on 600, and that will bold it even more. If we clicked on 900, that would bold it the most, but some fonts can only be bold a certain amount, but other fonts you get all the way down to 100, which is very thin, to 900, which is very bold. This is what 100 would look like on that font, but we're just gonna keep it at 600, which is pretty bold. All right, then what we can do is go back to content and we can go under alignment and we can center it. And we can go back to the Apple website and we can see that the text is a little bit smaller. So let's make it a little bit smaller. All we have to do is click on style and go to typography 
and we can change the size a little bit too, maybe something like that. If we see the Apple website once again, we can see that there is space on the left side and space on the right side. It doesn't just go all the way across. And that's really good for your eyes, so your eyes aren't going all the way from left to all the way to the right. That makes your eyes super tired. You want the content to sort of be in the middle a little bit more. So to do that, we go back to the website and we actually click on the entire section up here. And then under layout up here, it says content width is boxed and we can just make that into like a 700 maybe or maybe make it 600 and that looks pretty good. And we can go back to the Apple website and we can see that there's more space at the top and more space at the bottom. So we can easily do that also by editing this section and then going over to height and make it a minimum height. So now we can control the spacing. So let's make it just like that, not too big. Maybe we can put in 300. So basically there'll be 150 pixels at the top and 150 pixels at the bottom. What we can do now is go back to Apple's website and we can see that there's this subheadline up here that says support and service. So we can easily do that by going back to our website and clicking on this elements and just dragging in another heading on top of it. And then we could put something like for real, then we can center it. And if we look at Apple's website, we can see that the support and service is not as big of a gap as ours. So if we look at ours, we see it's a bigger gap. And the really cool thing about all this is that we can actually control the spacing of each individual element. So we can click on this edit right here, then go to advanced. We can unlink the value of margin because if we keep it linked, all the values are gonna be the same. And for the bottom right here, we can add in a negative value. So if we put in 10 or 100, we can see that it'll add 100 pixels of space to the bottom, but we can actually reverse that and we can put in negative 10 or more. So I'm using my arrow keys right here just to make it a negative 20 or 15 right here. And now we can see that there's not as much space between the for real and you are gonna do something amazing, just like the Apple website. It's very close. All right, so let's go back to our website and that is looking pretty good. So if we see Apple's website, we can see that we have this big image right here. So how do we do that? All we have to do is go back to our website. Then let's scroll all the way down and add another section. That section is just one column, so we'll just click on that. And then with this section selected, we're gonna make it a minimum height because if we didn't, then we wouldn't see anything. It would just be really narrow. So we just go over to height and we do minimum height and let's do 500 pixels. All right, now we're gonna add our image. So we just go to style and for background type, we're gonna click on classic and then we're gonna click this plus button to add an image. Now we have three different options. We can upload a file, we can choose from the media library, or we can search images from Pixabay. This searching images from Pixabay is brand new. It's super cool. These are 100% copyright free images that you can add to your website and it has a database of millions of images. So super cool, just click on that. And we have all of these different images to choose from, but of course you can also search for images. All right, so I'm just gonna search for Nature Man. And we have all of these different choices right here. And I'll just select this one and click save and insert. And now it's downloading. And now the image is inserted, but as you can see, it's all cut off and it's looking weird. In order to change that, we wanna to go to size and we wanna choose cover. That will make it so that the maximum amount of image is shown without repeating and without cutting off. We can also position it so it's a different position. Maybe we wanna position it so it's in the bottom center, or we can position it so that it is in the center center. Basically, that's the position or that's the focus of where the image is. All right, so that's looking pretty good. We can see this and this. And if we go back to the Apple website, we can see this paragraph underneath it. So how will we make this? It's super easy. All we have to do is go back to our website. And again, that is just one column. So we click on this plus button, we add a column. Then let's add in paragraph text. So we click on this elements and we drag in the text editor. 
Let's go ahead and copy this paragraph text twice. So I'm just gonna press Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC and Command V and do it again. All right, so now that we have some text in there, I wanna make the text darker. So we go to Style and we go to Text Color and I'm just gonna make that text a little bit darker. I'm also gonna change the font size. So I'm gonna go to Typography and click on this and change the font size. Maybe I'll make it 24. Then I'm going to change the font weight, which is how bold it is. So I'm going to make it a little bit bolder at 500. We can also change the line height, which is the spacing of the lines. So we can do that. And I'm going to change it to maybe, I don't know, 1.6 so that there's a little bit more of a gap right here. If we look at the Apple website, it's looking pretty close, but as you can see, there's space on this side, space on this side and space up here and here. So again, we can go back to our website and we can click on the whole section and under content width, we can change that maybe to 700. And we can also make it a minimum height. So it would add space up here or here, but I also wanna show you that you can add space to the text itself too. So we can click on this and we can go to advanced and we can unlink the values for margin. If we keep them linked, they'll all be the same. So we'll unlink them. Then we could put 100 pixels of space at the top and 100 pixels of space at the bottom. We can go back to our content and we can click on this button right here, which will give us more options and we can center everything. So now if we go back to the Apple website, we can see we have space on top, bottom, left, right, it's centered. And we have our paragraph text right here and it's dark. And we can see on our website, we have the same. So that's looking pretty cool. If we go back to the Apple website, we can see this picture right here. It's just a duplicate of this. So how do we do that without doing all of the work again? And that's again, super simple. We go back to our website and we go up here and you can right click and you can press duplicate. Once we do that, we can scroll down, click, hold and drag until the blue line shows up and then let it go. And now we have another image, but we don't just want this image. We want to change this image. So let's select this section, go to style, click on the image, go back to free images from Pixabay, maybe search nature girl, find the image, click it and press save and insert. Now all of those settings from up here will be applied down here. Then we can update our website. So we save all of those changes and we can view our website. And now when we scroll down, we can see our new section and the image, the paragraph and the other image. It's looking super awesome. All right, but let's exit out of there and let's go back to our website and let's edit even more things. So let's say that we really like this section right here. It has the text over the image and a button that goes to another page where you can watch a video. How do we make something like this? So what we can do is we can go back to our website right here and we can just duplicate this section right here. So we can just right click and press duplicate, but it looks super weird if you have a picture then another picture. So let's break it up with a text box. So let's go up here and duplicate this section and just click hold and drag and drag it to the middle. And now that separates it nicely. So again, we can swap out the image by using Pixabay. We can either go here to style and go here and select the image and choose another image or from Pixabay. Or what we can do is go to the Pixabay website. Like we can go to pixabay.com right here, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com and just download it directly from the website. There's another website that I like, it's called pexels.com, so P-E-X-E-L-S dot C-O-M, and press enter. And this has a whole bunch more images that are 100% copyright free, so you can use them on your website without getting into any legal troubles. So if we see on this Apple website, she kind of looks like she's concentrating, so maybe I'll just type in concentration. Go ahead and press enter and let's look for something that might work. All right, so I found an image that I like and now it's gonna say that we can download it for free and which size. We don't wanna download the original size because it's way too big for our website and it'll actually make our website slow. So the perfect size is the large size and then we can do free download. 
All right, now that that's downloaded, we can go back to our website and we can swap out this image right here by just clicking on this, going to style, and then we can go to image and click on it and we can click hold and drag this image here and it will upload. Once it uploads, we can press insert media and then we can exit out of this. And then just like the Apple website, we can add some text over this by clicking on the elements right here. Let's drag in a heading. Let's make it centered. Let's put in Jen is going places. All right. After we do that, we need to make it white and bolder so we can go to style. We can choose our text color and make it white. Then we can go to typography and we could change the weight to something bolder, maybe something like 600. We can also position the image differently so it's not over her face by clicking on this and then positioning it to the bottom center. But as you can see, the text is a little bit hard to read, so we can actually add a background overlay that will make this image a little bit darker so that the text will pop out a little bit more. So let's do that. To do that, all we have to do is scroll down under background overlay and we can click on it. Then we can choose a color and let's make it dark. And we can adjust the slider so it's either darker or lighter right here. All right, that's looking pretty good. So we have that. Let's go back to the Apple website and see what else we need. All right, so we can see that they have this button in order to watch the film. So let's go ahead and add that. I'm gonna exit out of here first. And we can go back to our website and let's add an element. And let's click hold and drag in a button. And we could go ahead and center the button by clicking on this button right here and it'll center. We can't really see it, so we need to change what the button looks like. To change it, let's go to style. And for text color, let's make it white. For border type, we could either make it solid line or a double line or a dotted line, and that's this line right here. In order for it to go away, let's just do solid and let's make the width zero. So now that goes away. And now let's change the content of the button. Let's click here and for the text, let's put watch the video. And for the link is where the button goes to when you click on it. So for the link, let's have it go to the contact page. So we can just start typing in contact. And then we can choose our contact page and now it'll go to the contact page. We can also get an icon just like they have on this Apple website, this little play icon right here. So we can go back to our website and we can add an icon and we can just look for a play icon. That one looks pretty similar to it and we can insert it. Now it does give us the choice of, do we wanna put the icon before or after? Let's put it after. And then we can go to style again and we can make that whole button text bigger by clicking on typography and just making it a little bit bigger like that maybe 14 and that looks pretty good all right it doesn't really make sense going to the contact page but obviously you could just copy in a youtube url and paste it in there and then i'll go to the youtube page but let's say instead of all of this you actually want to play the youtube video inside of the page and not just a link to the youtube page you can easily do that too so what i'm going to do is just delete both of these right here i'm just going to click on this right click and press delete and right click on this and delete and now I'm just gonna go to youtube.com and I'm gonna search for my favorite video called Mountain. All right, and once I found the video I like, all I have to do is click on it. All right, so we have the YouTube video right here and all we have to do is copy this URL. So just right click, press copy and go back to our website. And now we need a video element. So all we have to do is click on this and then go to video, click hold and drag it in. And now we can paste that YouTube link right here. So just highlight it all and go to paste. That video will show up, but it's a little bit too wide. It takes over the entire screen and I don't really like that. So I'm just gonna click on the entire section and I'm gonna go to layout and I'm gonna make the content with 800. So 800, I'll just type that in right here, 800. 
and maybe I'll make the height a little bit more. Maybe I'll make that 600 to give it a little bit more space, the minimum height. And now we have this really cool video in our website, but it doesn't really go with our background. So let's change our background really quickly. To do that, again, we can open up a new tab and go to pixabay.com, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. And we can just search for something like night sky, press enter. And we can scroll and search for something that we really like. Maybe we like this one right here and just click on free download. Let's again, download it, not the largest size, but the next size down 1920 by 1079 and press download. Confirm that you're not a robot, unless you are, of course, and then press download. All right, now that that's downloaded, let's go back to our website. Let's click on this entire section. Let's go to style and let's click on that image and let's upload this new image. All right, and now we'll upload and then we can insert media. It is gonna be a little bit darker because of that background overlay. So all we have to do is go here and scroll down to background overlay and we can actually just remove that background overlay by pressing clear. All right, now we have a really good video in there and it has a really cool background and it goes with it and it looks super awesome. Of course, if you ever mess up, you can press Control or Command Z, or we can go to the revisions right here, the history, and we can just move back in time. So we can just keep on moving back in time and it saves everything that we did. And we can go forward and back and maybe we just like this. Maybe it's pretty good. So we got rid of all of that. And again, we can exit out of here. And maybe what we wanna do instead of playing the video actually in there, we do want them to click on the link, but we want the video to be playing without any sound in the background. It's a super cool effect. So let's see how to do it. We can go to YouTube and let's type in Greenland 4K. Let's search for that and let's click on this one right here. And we can see this really cool video right here. Let's try to add this to our background. So what we can do is we could just copy this up here, press copy. We could go back to our homepage. We can click on this entire section. And then under background, let's click on that. And instead of it being a classic background, it's a video background. So we can click on that and then we can paste it in here. So we paste in this video and now it's gonna show us that video. What we can also do is make it start and stop at a certain number of seconds. So maybe we want it to start at 112 seconds and we want it to end at 134 seconds. So the best part of the video we're showing. So again, that background overlay is there. So we wanna get rid of it. So let's scroll down and go to background overlay and let's make it like that. And maybe this video is called the Great Glacier. All right, and so that is looking super good. Maybe we want this at the top of our website so we can click, hold, and drag, and drag it all the way to the top. And let's click on this, and let's make the section actually a little bit bigger by going to layout and making the minimum height maybe, I don't know, 650, something like that and pressing update, and then we can view and preview our changes by clicking on preview. And now we can see our film with a navigation in the background. We probably could make it a little bit darker, but to me, this is looking super awesome. And then we can watch the video. We can scroll and look at our website. We probably should have put text here, but that is looking super cool. And I think that's just beautiful. So sometimes you need a huge block of text on your website. I usually don't recommend just having a wall of text because let's be honest, no one really reads it. But sometimes you do need it for like the terms of service or just to really explain your product well. So we can see on Apple's website, they have it here. They have just this huge block of text here. So how do we make something like that? Let's go back to our website and let's add in a new section. So we can do that by pressing this plus up here. And then we can click on plus again, and then we can add this new section. It's just one column, so we'll just click it there. All right, I do recommend breaking up your big wall of text as much as you can with bullet points, with headings, with just different paragraphs. 
So that's what we're gonna do first. We're just gonna add in a heading. So we're gonna go up here and click on this elements and just drag in a heading. And then we're gonna go ahead and click on the elements again and add in a text editor paragraph. We can just copy and paste this so it's a little bit more text. We can go back to the heading and change the style a little bit. Let's go to style, let's go to typography and let's transform it to normal. All right, let's change the text up here to something like you're gonna do great things. You're going to do great things. And if we go back to the Apple website, we can see that their text doesn't go all the way across because that, again, is really hard to read. It's centered in the middle, so let's do that. Let's go back to our website and let's click on the entire section and let's go to content width and let's just put in 700 right here. And now we can see on the Apple website, again, they have a little bit more text, but it's basically this, and then this again, and then this again. So it's just that section duplicated a bunch of times. So we can go here and we can just duplicate this section and duplicate it again. And now we have a whole bunch of different sections that we can add different text to. We probably wanna add some spacing to the top right here, so that's super easy. Just click on this section go to advanced, unlink the values so they're not all the same, and let's add maybe 50 or even 100 to the top. And then we can go here and then go to advanced and then unclick it so it isn't all the same. And then go to bottom and add 100 pixels of space to the bottom. That will give it a little bit more breathing room and now that pretty much looks something like this. Of course, you can edit all of the settings in the style to make it look exactly how you want it. So that's how you make a wall of text. Not that interesting, but sometimes very necessary. The next thing that we're gonna do is add two columns, one on the left side and one on the right side. If we look at the Disney website here, we can see a picture is on the left and text is on the right. And then a picture is on the right and the text is on the left. And if we scroll down, they keep on doing that left, right, right, left, and that's super common. So how do we make something like this? Well, it's super easy. If we see the Disney website, we can see that this is just an image, and this is a headline, and this is some text. So let's add that. And let's add two columns. So we go to our website. Let's scroll all the way down for this one. Click on this to add a new section. And instead of adding one column, we're gonna add two columns. Just click on that and then click on the elements button and we're gonna be adding a text to this. Go back up here and let's add in a paragraph. Click on the elements button again and add in an image on the right side. Click on the entire section and then under vertical align, we're gonna do middle because everything is aligning in the middle right here, not at the top and not at the bottom, just like on Disney's website, it's aligned in the middle. Disney's website also has a lot of spacing and a little bit spacing under here, so let's make it a minimum height. So to do that, we just go minimum height and we're gonna make the minimum height actually 500. So it has a little bit more spacing on the top and on the bottom. If we go back to Disney's website, we're gonna see that there's a little bit more space between these columns. And in order to do that, all we have to do is go under here where it says column gap and make it wide. And now we can start adding text. Maybe we'll call this the great desert. And now let's find a desert image. We can click on this, we can go to choose image, then let's get a free image from Pixabay, and let's type in desert. All right, we see this image right here, we can click on it, we can press save and insert, and it'll insert right there. Let's make the edges of our image a little bit more round so it gives it a softer appearance and it looks cooler. So to do that, let's go to style, and under border radius, let's put in 30. We're gonna keep the values linked so that they're all the same, and that looks really cool. All right, but if we see on Disney's website, we can see that it goes on the left side of the image, and then there's a right image, and then there is a left image up here. So how do we do that? Super easy. All we have to do is go to this section and duplicate it, and then click, hold, and drag this column to the left side. And we can do that again. Click here, duplicate, and click, hold, and drag it to the right side. Now let's add in some other images. 
let's call this one Amazing Ocean and click on it. Click here, free images from Pixabay. Let's type in ocean. Let's find a really cool ocean picture. All right, and I like this picture of this whale right here, so just click on it and save and insert. Maybe for the last one, we'll put fall in love. And we can click on the image and let's search for something on Pixabay. Let's search for fall. And we see this image right here, so we can just click on it and save and insert. All right, so I got a little bit carried away, but that is looking super awesome. We have the image on the right, then on the left and on the right. And that's a great way to break up your content. If you have services or different products or your business has different features or benefits, it's super good. So now that you can make practically any design from any website that you've seen, I wanna tell you that you don't actually need to. It's super important to know how to do it so that you can modify anything, but most of these solutions have already been made for you. So you already know that you can scroll down and click on this A right here, and we can see all of the pages or any of the free pages, and we can click on any of these and import any of the pages on them, and then just delete what we don't need. But let's say you wanted to start with something a little bit cleaner. You didn't want it to be designed so much so that you can add in your own design. You can easily do that by clicking on blocks. So let's say you needed something for your services page. You can go here and you can click on services and it'll show you a whole bunch of different ways that you can display your services. You can show them in a column of four with one, two, three, four. You can show them with a left and right image like we did before. You can show them with two columns stacking up on top of each other or with three columns designed like this. So you can go ahead and click on whatever you want and we can just import the block. So just click on this that will import it and it'll take on all of your settings, all of your theme styles. So everything will be consistent with your website. And then you can just start editing it right here, just like you would normally. If you don't like something that you did, of course you could press Control Z on a PC or Command Z on a Mac and just undo all of that. Or of course we can just exit out of here to delete that section. All right, so let's recap. You've learned so much. So you've learned whatever we press on the right side up here, you can edit on the left side over here. We've also learned how to change the text, how to change images, how to add sections, how to duplicate sections. You learn how to add buttons and how to change buttons. We learn how to undo and redo. We've learned how to publish. We learned about spacing. We learned how to delete things. We learned what columns are and how to control them. We've learned about adding videos and importing blocks. We've learned how to change the background and really customize it so you can make anything that you want. With these tools, you can make practically anything. It takes a little bit of practice, but with a little bit of time, you're gonna become an expert. And now we can update that right here. And we can view our page by just going up here and taking off all of this, pressing enter. And now we can see that our website is looking really great. And of course you can go to the about page and we can edit with Elementor and make all those changes just like we did on the home page. Or we can go to the services page and again edit with Elementor and make all those changes just like on the home page. However, if we click on the contact page, it's a little bit different. We can go ahead and press edit with Elementor. And we can see that we can edit everything like normal, like this contact, this section, this get in touch, this send a message, all of these different numbers and emails. I could put in my email right here by just clicking on it and clicking on this, then putting in my email. We can change the business hours by clicking on it and changing it there, or change this map by clicking on this little edit pencil right here. And we can change this, maybe we want it to be Malibu, California, and that will change the location of the map. We can zoom in a little bit if we want to. We can change the height of the map. We can change the style. Maybe we don't want it to be black and white, so we go here, we go here, and we can up the saturation a little bit, maybe to 100, or we can make it really colorful and vibrant. 
I'll just keep it at 100. You can change the brightness and contrast and everything like that. Of course, we can also exit out of any of these different sections, any of these different columns. We can delete if we want. But how do we change this form right here? We can see that if we click on this form, we don't have any ability to edit it. It just shows us this short code right here. So basically this form isn't made by Elementor, it's made by a company called WP Forms, and they allow you to embed their form into your Elementor page. And to do that, what you do is you would copy this form ID, which I'm gonna show you how to get to in a second. You'd go up here and you would search for something called short code. So we could just scroll down and search for something called a short code. And we can see it right here. So what we would do is we would click hold and drag it somewhere. Let's say we dragged it there. And then we would paste in that form code. So we just click here and press paste. Then that form would be embedded wherever we pasted that code. So I don't actually wanna do that. So I'm just gonna delete this section, but that's how you'd get the form in there. But you probably wanna know how do you edit this form itself? How do we change the name, the phone number, email, message? Maybe we want it to be a little bit different. If we look at Fiji Waters contact us form, we could see it's first name, last name, email. I'm a consumer, I have a questions. So the fields are different. And if we look at Stripe's contact form, we could see it's first name, last name, work email, country, payment volumes, or anything else. So we can see that on every website, each form is tailored to that actual website. So how do we modify our form in the same way? It's super easy. All we have to do is go back to the dashboard of our website. So yourwebsite.com forward slash WP admin and press enter. Then I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna leave and not save my changes. If I wanted to save my changes, I could have pressed update right here. So I'm just gonna press leave because I don't want any of those changes saved. And then we can click on WP forms and it's right over here. And we can see our contact form right here and we can see that short code right here. So that's the thing that you copied in order to embed this form right here. If we wanted to add a new form, we would click add new because maybe you want two forms on your website, one for returns and one to contact you. So you just click on add new right here and it would give you a new short code that you can copy and paste right into your website. All right, so we're just gonna edit this contact form right here. So we're just gonna click on contact form. And now we can see that that contact form is the same. It has our name, phone number, email, and message. And to me, this makes it much easier for your user to contact you rather than copying your email address and pasting it in. All they have to do is just fill out a form. But how do we change these fields if we want to? It's super easy. All we have to do is just click, hold, and drag this field over here, wherever we want it, and then let it go. Now this is a drop down, so it's gonna give us our first choice, second choice, third choice. We can click on it to edit it and then change the choices or add ones or delete ones. I don't really want this, so I'm just gonna delete it and press okay. And then maybe I wanna add a multiple choice asking them which department do they wanna contact so we can see who we need to show the email to. So we'll just do a multiple choice right here. We can go ahead and click on it to edit it. And then I'm gonna put which department. So which department. All right, so maybe you can contact sales. Maybe you can contact technical support, or maybe you can contact service. So that looks pretty good, but maybe we want it to look a little bit different. Let's go to advanced options and let's make it three columns so it's all on one line and doesn't take up so much space. Once we do that, we can press save, and then we can go ahead and click on settings. Once we do that, let's click notifications. So now it's gonna ask us, where do you wanna send this email? So I'm just gonna type in my email address because I want them all to go to my email address. And what do I want it to say as a subject? New entry, contact form, that's fine. Who do I want it to be from? I want it to be from the name of the person. So I click on the smart tags and click name. So actually delete everything first, show smart tags, click on name. Now that's gonna input their name because when they fill out the form, they add their name. So it's gonna say from name and then from email, let's delete that and let's click on email. So this is gonna insert their email. 
And then who do we reply to? We reply to their email. So I'm just gonna exit out of this right here, delete it, and go to show smart tags and do email. Then the message it's gonna send us is all the fields. So all of the fields on your form, it's just gonna send to us in our email. So that all looks pretty good. The last thing is the confirmation. So we can click on that. And once someone fills out your form, then it's gonna say, thanks for contacting us. We'll be in touch with you shortly. You can of course change this message right here, but I think that's fine. So I'm just gonna press save. Then I'm gonna go back to our website by deleting all of this and going to our website. All right, then I'm gonna click on contact and I'm gonna fill out our form. So I'm just gonna put Tyler, phone number, email, want to contact you for sales and the message. How can I buy your product? All right, then I'm going to click submit. Then it's going to show us the message confirming that we sent it correctly. And now we can go to our email and we can see what our customer wrote to us. So I'm just going to go to my Gmail up here. So now we can see that contact form right here with all of the fields and everything like that. And if I go to reply, it should reply to tyler at tyler.com or basically the email that they put in there. So that's super cool and it makes contacting you so much easier. Every once in a while, this contact form might go into spam. So sometimes you just have to mark it as not spam. So let's exit out of there and you are all done learning how to control your contact page and your contact form. The next thing that we're gonna do is make your website perfectly mobile and tablet friendly. Right now it works perfectly on the desktop, but it's not perfect on the phone. Making your website mobile friendly is super important. As you can see, the internet traffic from mobile devices keeps on growing and growing. An easy but not perfect way of thinking about it is 50% of your traffic will probably come from desktop and the other 50% will probably come from phones and tablets. So making your website perfect for the phone and tablet is an absolute must. So let's see what this looks like on the phone. So as we can see here, it's blank because it's not showing that video right here. If we scroll down a little bit, this could probably be centered and so could this. If we scroll down a little bit more, that looks good. Your website in general tries to make it as mobile friendly as possible, but we do need to tweak some additional settings. So let's scroll down more, that all looks good. Everything looks good pretty much over there. And we can see that this image is good, it's centered nicely. We scroll down more, we can see that this image isn't perfect because there's a person to the right side here, so maybe we want them to be positioned in the center right here, so we'll change that. That looks pretty good, but this image needs to be switched, the text needs to be up here, and the image needs to be below. We go down here and there and everything else looks pretty good. So let's make those changes. All right, so let's go back to the homepage and let's click on edit with Elementor. And let's see our website in the mobile view. So to do that, we just go down here and we click on mobile. And I wanted to show you what it looked like on the actual phone because this video doesn't actually really play on the phone. So in order to get it to play on the phone, all we have to do is click up here and then go to style. And once we do that, we can play on mobile right here. So press yes. And now that video will play in the background on our phone. But actually there's one more thing that we need to do because what if that video gets deleted or it doesn't play on all devices? So just in case that video doesn't load, we need a fallback image. So I'm just gonna click choose image and go to my media library and I'll choose this image as the fallback image and I'll press insert media. That's just so if this video doesn't load, it's gonna fall back to this image. All right, so let's scroll down a little bit more. We can see that this is not centered, so we can click on it and we can just go to alignment and center. This is not gonna affect the desktop version because we see this little icon right here that says mobile. So we can go ahead and do that for this one also. We can make this centered by clicking on it and then going to style. And under alignment, we see this and we could just click center. So that will be centered and we can just keep on doing that. Make this centered, click on here, go to style and make it centered and do it again. So all of the text right here will be centered and it'll look really great on mobile. All right, so all of that centered, that's looking pretty good. 
we can see this is looking fine. Maybe we want to change the text just for this right here. So if we want to change the text size just for mobile, we can click on this and we can go to style and under typography, we can see that this little mobile icon right here and we can change the size. Maybe we want it to be like that. You can also change it for tablet or change it just for the desktop, but we're just doing mobile right now. And now we can scroll down. This is all looking really great. It did all this for you. Scroll down and we can see that this image is looking good. We can see the person in there, but if we scroll down, we can see that this image, we don't see a person. So how do we change that? We go up here, we go to style. And then for the position, instead of default, we want it to be center right, I believe. That's where she is. And now that will focus in on her just on the mobile phone. All right, so let's scroll down. So we can see here that we have text on top and an image on bottom, but on this one, we have the image on top and the text on bottom. And so we need to change that. This one's fine. So we need to swap this. So how do we do that? We click on this entire section right here, and then we go to advanced, and then you go to responsive, and you say reverse columns on mobile. So now everything is looking consistent. Text on top, image on bottom, text on top, image on bottom, text on top, image on bottom, and everything else looks fine. Once we update that, we can actually go back to our desktop view and we can see that nothing was affected on the desktop. So this is still aligned to the left and everything else remained the same for the desktop. Only the mobile settings were changed. So that's super awesome that you can control the mobile, tablet, and desktop settings all independently of each other so you can have the perfect settings for each device. And now if we refresh our website and we look here, we can see that the website is looking perfect. All right, so that's how you make your website perfectly mobile and tablet friendly. Except for we do actually have one more problem. If we click on update here, and then we go to this preview changes right here. And let's just go to our real website by getting rid of all of that. And now let's simulate what a mobile phone would look like. So let's make it really small. And if we click on this right here, we can see that that home button is not visible. So we can see the about services and contact, but we can't see the home button. And actually when we hover over each of these buttons during the mobile view, it turns white and it makes it invisible also. So we need to change both of those problems. The home button is actually invisible because whatever active page you're on, the color for the menu should be a little bit different so that you know that you're on that specific page. But for some reason, the settings are white right now, so you can't see it at all. So let's go back to the normal view. And then all we have to do is click on customize. We can close this right here. And then we go to header. And then we go to transparent header. Then all we have to do is scroll down and go to menu and click on that and scroll down a little bit more. Then it has the desktop menu right here. If we click on this or it has the mobile menu. So we click on the tablet or mobile and there is our mobile menu right there. And what we want to do is we want to change the hover color. So we click on hover. If we click on this right here. We can see it. It's everything is black. And when we hover over it, we want it to be also maybe a dark gray like that. Not exactly black so that when you hover over it, it will slightly turn gray. And that will also change the settings for the active page. So whatever page you're on currently, that link will become a little bit brighter. All right, once we're done with that, we can click on publish. And of course you could change the background of all of this and anything like that, but I think it looks good now. And then we can exit out of there. And now when we make it the mobile version of the website and we click on this, we can see all of those pages and home is a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter gray. I don't know if you can see it when I roll over all of these, it turns a little bit lighter gray. So that is looking pretty awesome. So the next thing that we're going to learn to do is how to control this footer all the way down here. The footer is like your feet. It's at the bottom. So to do that, it's the same as any Elementor page. All we have to do is go up here. Instead of just clicking on edit with Elementor, just click site footer. 
And there we have it, just the footer. And I personally don't like the way it looks. To me, this is way too complex. I'm a simple man, I just want a simple footer. All right, so what I think I wanna do is just make this three columns instead of four. I want this menu to be laid out horizontally instead of vertically. I wanna have this logo on the left side, the menu in the middle, and the social icons maybe on the right side. So how do we do all this? Let's first delete this column so we get three columns instead of four. And let's delete this up here, this about us. And let's delete this here and delete this connect right here. We'll move those social media icons over to the right side. We'll get rid of this address right here and keep the logo. All right, then we'll go up here and we wanna change the width of these columns. So I wanna make it different up here. So we go up here and then we go to layout and under structure, I think I want it to be 16 on the left side, 66 in the middle and 16% on the right side. So I just click on that. Then let's go over to this menu right here and press edit and we'll do it inline instead of default. So inline. I want it to be in the center and more spacing between all of the different menu options. So go to style and let's increase the space a little bit, maybe like that, maybe to 30 or 35. And alignment, let's make it centered. All right, but now this logo looks lower and this looks higher and this looks a little bit lower. So let's align everything vertically. Super easy, just click on this right here, this whole section, and then go to layout. And then under vertical align, we'll put it middle and that will make everything aligned in the middle. Super cool. Then let's go down here and click on it and let's align this in the middle too. And of course we can click on this and we can change any of those links by clicking on content and changing any of those links. Maybe it'll go to our homepage, about page. Maybe we wanna add a privacy policy or a terms of use. So all you do is you'd create a page and then you would link to this page by just clicking on it and just start linking to it right here. So if it's your service page, you would just type forward slash service. And then that would link to the service page. Or you can just start typing, like if you want it to be your contact page, if you start typing contact, you can see it'll give us that option and we can click on it and it'll go to the contact page. So that's super easy. Then you can change the text up here to contact and you can change all of your links like that. You can also change your social media icons the same way by clicking on it and then changing them right here. So you can search for another icon by clicking on this icon library and then just putting in your social media links right here. Again, you can change your logo in the same way, clicking on it and then changing the logo right here. All right, but that looks really great to me. So I'm just gonna update that. And then I'm gonna preview changes and I'm just gonna take off all of this right here so we can see it on our actual website exit out of here and scroll down all the way to the bottom and now we can see that super simple great footer but we do have one more step and that's again to make it mobile and tablet friendly so let's see what it would look like on a mobile device let's just simulate a small screen here and it actually looks pretty good this could be maybe a little bit smaller or the links could actually go vertically let's see the options that we have for that so let's open this back up let's go to edit with Elementor and go to site footer again. Let's click on this mobile view right here. We'll go to mobile and everything looks good except for this. So let's click on edit and we can see that this isn't actually giving us a way to make it different on mobile than it does for desktop. So we need to do a simple little trick that is really cool. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to duplicate this right here, right click, press duplicate, and then let's click on the first one and let's go to advanced, scroll down and go to responsive. And for this one, I'm gonna say, we're gonna hide this on mobile. So we're not gonna show this one on mobile. We're only gonna show this one on desktop. And then for this one, it's gonna be the opposite. So I'm gonna click on it and then I'm gonna go to advanced and then I'm gonna go to responsive. And I'm actually gonna hide on desktop and hide on tablet and show on mobile. So now this one is only gonna be seen on mobile devices. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna go back to content and I'm gonna change it to the list layout. 
and then I'm gonna go to style and I'm gonna mess with the spacing in between. So that looks pretty good to me. So it's gonna be about 14. And then I'm gonna update that and I'm gonna preview our changes. So we can see right here, for some reason, adding that mobile vertical menu actually made the desktop menu move up and it's now not aligned with this anymore. So that's pretty easy to change. All we have to do is go back to edit the footer and then click on it right here, the desktop version, and then go to advanced. And for top margin, we wanna make it 30, but we actually wanna unlink all the values so they're not all the same and make these all zeros. That will give space to the top right here, which will actually push this down and should make it all align. So let's update that. Let's view our footer. Everything seems aligned right now to me. Let's go to our main website so we can see what it looks like on there. Scroll all the way to the bottom. We can exit out of this. Now we can see that this is the desktop view, so it shows the desktop version. And if we go to our mobile view, it's gonna just show us that mobile version. So that's a super cool way to also make your website mobile friendly. You can show just things on the mobile version of your website and just things on the desktop version of your website. And now your footer is perfect. The next thing that we're gonna do is put SSL on your website. But what is SSL? If we go on the Disney website, we can see this lock right here, which means this connection is secure. If we click on it, it shows up green and it says connection is secure. On the other hand, if we go to our website right now, it says not secure. And that can probably really freak out your customer. But what does it mean when a website is secure or not secure? When you fill out something like a contact form on the Disney website, it goes from your computer at home to the Disney computer, wherever that computer is located. But while that information on the contact form that you just filled out from your computer is traveling through the internet to the Disney computer, it has to go through multiple computers in order to get to its destination. Anywhere in that destination from your computer to that Disney computer, the information can be intercepted along the way. So if we didn't have this lock right here, that information would be intercepted and it could be read just like plain text. But because Disney has this lock right here, if someone intercepts it like your internet service provider or a different computer, then that message will be encrypted and impossible to read. It'll look like just a whole bunch of code. It's the same thing with credit card information. If we scroll down here and click buy now, without having SSL, then that credit card information can get intercepted and someone can use your credit card. But because it has this SSL security lock right here, even if that information was intercepted, no one would be able to read it, so it's fine. In fact, the only way to accept credit card payments on your website is if you do have SSL. So if that's something that you plan for in the future, then you definitely need SSL. But really, you need it regardless for two additional reasons. And the first is that Google ranks you higher in the search engines. And the second is if you have a not secure symbol on your website, people will probably freak out and just take off and not even continue browsing on your website. So how do we get this SSL security? It's super easy. Let's exit out of here and leave the site. Then all we have to do is go up here and go to the dashboard. And once you're in the dashboard, again, you can see this not secure and that would probably freak anyone out. So what you need to do is add a new plugin. So just go to plugins and click add new. All right, then we can scroll down and we can search for a plugin and let's just type in SSL. Press enter. Then we're gonna find this plugin called Really Simple SSL. If you don't see it, just type in Really Simple SSL. Then click install now. And as you can see, it's installed 4 million times and it has five out of five stars. So just click install now. Once it's installed, then just click on activate. All right, then we can go to settings and SSL. Then we can scroll down and we can see that the SSL is not enabled yet, but we do have an SSL certificate detected on our website. So if you don't see this right here, you need to contact your hosting company and you need to ask them for a free SSL. Most good hosting companies will already have this included. Some really bad hosting companies make you pay for it. But most of the time you're gonna be fine. It will be included on your website. If it's not, just contact your hosting company. All right, once we do that, we can go ahead and activate SSL right here. And we're gonna scroll down and make sure that everything is okay. After that, we're gonna go to our website by 
going up here and clicking on visit site. And we can see that the connection is still not secure, but if we click on our website, we can see that it is HTTPS. That S is the security. Before it was just HTTP. But the website is still not secure, and that's because we were building our website and editing our content and uploading images. And some of those images still have that HTTP link instead of the HTTPS link. So we need all of the images to have the HTTPS link and it's pretty easy to do. So what we have to do is we have to go back into the back end to the dashboard and then go to Elementor and then go to Tools. Then we can scroll down and let's click Regenerate CSS and let's click Resync Library. I don't know if these do anything, but I like clicking buttons. The real thing that you need to do is go to Replace URL right here. This is where the magic happens, as they say. And what we need to do is copy in our new URL right here. So we'll just click on it and copy it with the HTTPS. So copy it. We're going to put that on the right side. So we're going to paste that on the right side. So it says HTTPS, our website.com. And then we're going to paste it also into the old one. So we're going to paste it, except we're going to remove this S right here. So we're going to remove this S. So the old one was HTTP and the new one is HTTPS. What this is doing, it's searching everywhere on your website for the HTTP, yourwebsite.com, and they're replacing it with the HTTPS. The S again is for your security. So now we can click replace URLs and it says 13 rows affected. So 13 things were changed from HTTP to HTTPS. Press OK. Now we can go ahead and visit our site. And now we can see we have that lock symbol. So there it is. Connection is secure. We can look at our website here by clicking on it and it says HTTPS. Now no one will be freaked out that your website says not secure. We can also go to the about page, make sure that's okay. It is, it has that lock symbol. Service page, make sure that's okay. Has that lock symbol and the contact page, make sure that's okay. And it has that lock symbol. Sometimes, every once in a while, if you don't see that lock symbol on one of your pages, then it means that all you have to do is click on edit with Elementor, change a little something and press update. Then that page will be updated and that lock symbol will show up. But right now it's showing up perfectly. All right, so that's how you install SSL. Again, it makes sure when you send a message right here that it's encrypted and people can't intercept it. And it allows you to accept credit card information on your website and it ranks you higher in the search engine and it gives people a peace of mind that your website is secure. All right, so that's it. Congratulations, you've learned so much. You've learned how to get hosting. You've learned how to install WordPress. You've learned how to change your title and tagline so the search engines can find you. You've learned how to change your navigation at the top and make a logo. You've learned how to make this little icon right here. You've learned how to design your website so it could look like practically any design in the entire world. You've learned how to make your website mobile friendly so that anyone in the entire world can access it and it'll look amazing. You've also learned how to make a footer on your website and add security so that your website is secure for your users. So congratulations, you should be proud. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. I'm Tyler Moore, thank you so much.